Hello friends, welcome back to my channel. So this is Pramod and this is Comsha Security Plus real exam question series and this part is very helpful to pass the Comsha Security Plus exam. So let's go to the questions and this is a question. An organization's internet facing website was compromised when an attacker exploited a buffer overflow. So which of the following should the organization deploy to best protect against similar attacks in the future? Option A, NGFW, Option B, WF, Option C, TLS, Option D, SD-WAN. And the correct answer for this question is Option B, WF. So let's check the explanation for this answer. And the explanation is the best option to protect against buffer overflow attacks in the future is to deploy a web application firewall. And web application firewall functionality is a web application firewall monitors and filters HTTP traffic to and from web applications, specifically looking for malicious requests that could exploit vulnerabilities like buffer workflows or flows. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option B, web application firewall, WAF. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, which of the following is used to add extra complexity before using a one-way data transformation algorithm? Option A, key stretching. Option B, data masking. Option C, steganography. Option D, salting and the correct answer for this question is option d salting so let's check the explanation for this answer and the explanation is salting is a security technique where a random string of character is added to password before hashing it making rainbow table attacks and other brute force attempts more difficult so that's why the correct answer for this question is option d salting so let's move to the next question. Next question is an employee clicked a link and email from a payment website that asks the employee to update contact information. The employee entered the login information but received a page not found error message. So which of the following types of social engineering attacks occurred? Option A brand impersonation. Option B pretesting. Option C type of cutting and option T phishing and the correct answer for this question is option D phishing so let's check the explanation so phishing this is attacks involves sending fraudulent emails that appears to be from a legitimate source like a payment website to trick the user into revealing sensitive information like login credentials so that's why the correct answer for this question is option D phishing so let's move to the next question. The next question is which of the following threat actors is the most likely to be hired by a foreign government to attack critical systems located in other countries? Option A, hacktivist. Option B, whistleblower. Option C, organized crime. Option D, unskilled attacker. And the correct answer for this question is option C, organized crime crime so let's check the explanation so according to cyber security experts the most likely threat actor to be hired by a foreign government to attack critical system is organized crime so organized crime groups often have the resources skills and connections to carry out sophisticated attacks and are motivated by financial gain which can align with the objectives of a foreign government seeking to disturb critical systems they can also operate across national borders making them suitable for cross-border attacks so that's why the correct answer for this question is option c organized crime so let's move to the next question the next question is an enterprise is trying to limit outbound dns traffic originating from its internal network so outbound dns requests will only be allowed from one device with ip address 10.50.10.25 so which of the following firewall acls will accomplish this goal so option a the access list outbound email port 53 access list outbound deny 
the IP address 10.50.10.25 slash 32 53. Option B is access lit output email and IP address is 10.55.32.53. Access list outbound by port 53. Option C, access list outbound permit 453. Access list outbound deny. The IP address is 10.50.10.2532 port 53. And option D is access list outbound email permit and up port 53. And IP address is 10.50.10.25 slash 32. And access list outbound deny. IP address is 0.0.0, .0 and port 53. And the correct answer for this question is option D. Access lead outbound permit 10.50.10.25 slash 32 0.0.0 slash 0.453. And access lead outbound deny 0.0.0 .0 slash 0.0.0 .0 slash 0 port 53. And let's check the explanation. The access rate outbound permit 10.50.10.25 slash 32 0.0.0 slash 0 port 53 and access rate outbound deny 0.0.0 slash 0 0.0.0 0 .0 slash 0 port 53. So access rate outbound permit 53 this rule explicitly allows outbound DNS traffic port 53 only from the device with the IP address 10.50.10.25. And access list outbound deny 53. This rule is denies all outbound DNS traffic to any destination except the one specifically permitted in the previous rule, effectively blocking all other DNS requests from the network. That's why the correct answer is D for this question. So let's move to the next question. Next question is a company prevented direct access from the database administrators workstations to the network segment that contains database servers. So which of the following should a database administrator use to access the database servers? Option A jump server, option B radius, option C HSM, option D load balancer. And the correct answer for this question is option A jump server and the explanation is a database administrator should use a jump server to access the database servers if direct access from their workstation is prevented so jump server a secure server that allows users to access other more restricted networks from a less secure network in this scenario the database administrator would access the database servers through the jump server so which is considered a safer intermediary point so that's why the correct answer is a jump server so let's move to the next question next question is which of the following scenarios describe the possible business email compromise attack option a an employee receives a gift card request in an email that has executive names in the display field of the email option b employees who open an email attachment receive message is demanding payment in order to access files Option C, a service tech employee receives an email from the HR director asking for login credentials to a cloud administrator account. Option D, an employee receives an email with a link to phishing site that is designed to look like the company's email portal. And the correct answer for this question is option C, a service tech employee receives an email from the HR director asking for login credentials to a cloud administrator account. So let's check the explanation. An explanation is the business email compromise BUC attacks often involves attackers impersonating high level executives or trusted individuals to trick employees into divulging sensitive information. In this scenario, the attacker is posing as the HR director requesting access to a critical cloud administrator account which could allow them to gain control over sensitive data. So that's why the correct answer is C. A service desk employee receives an email from the HR director asking for login credentials to a cloud administrator account. So let's move to the next question. Next question is a data administrator is configuring authentication for a SaaS application and would like to reduce the number of credentials employees need to maintain. The company prefers to use domain credential to access new SaaS applications. So which of the following methods would allow this functionality? Option A, SSO. Option B, LIP. Option C, MFA. And option D, 
PIP. And the correct answer for this question is option A, SSO. So let's check the explanation. So SSO means single sign-on allows users to authenticate once with their domain credentials and then access multiple applications without needing to log in again for each one effectively reducing the number of credentials employees need to manage. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, SSO. So let's move to the next question. Next question is, an employee receives a text message that appears to have been sent by the payroll department and is asking for credentials verification. So which of the following social engineering techniques are being attempted? So choose two out of this option. Option A, type postpetting, option B, phishing, option C, impersonation, option D, wishing, option E, smishing, and option F, misinformation. And the correct answer for this question is option B and option E. B is a phishing and E is a smishing. So let's check the explanation. So phishing, this is a broad term for fraudulent attempts to obtain sensitive information like login credentials or credit card numbers by discussing themselves as a legitimate entry often through email or text messages. In this scenario, the attacker is using a payroll department's name to trick the employee into providing their credentials. And smishing, this is a specific type of phishing that occurs through SMS messages. The attacker is using a text message to impersonate the payroll department and request sensitive information. So that's why the correct answer is B, phishing and E, smishing. So let's move to the next question. The next question is, an administrator notices that several users are logging from suspicious IP addresses after speaking, speaking with the users. The administrator determines that employees were not logging in from those IP addresses and the resets affected users' passwords. So which of the following should the administrator implement to prevent this type of attack from succeeding in the future. Option A, multi-factor authentication. Option B, permissions assignment. Option C, access management. Option D, password complexity. And the correct answer for this question is option A, multi-factor authentication. So let's check the explanation. So multi-factor authentication MFA requires users to provide not only their passwords but also a second form of identification like a code sent to their phone or fingerprint scan when logging in from a new device or an unfamiliar location. This added layer of security significantly reduces the risk of unauthorized access even if a password is compromised. So that's why the correct answer for this question is option A, multi-factor authentication so i hope you are enjoying this video and this part has been completed so study hard good luck and thanks for watching if you like this video please don't forget to subscribe the channel to see more video like this i will upload next part shortly thanks for watching thank you